Today, I'm gonna try to get my game running with 100,000 lasers at the same time. But right now, my factory can barely survive 1,000 lasers without dropping FPS. So the mega factories that I've been hyping up are literally impossible for now. And the reason it is this bad is honestly a little bit embarrassing. Well, when I first made these lasers, I was never trying to make the perfect system. And you can tell. Honestly, I was just barely keeping up posting one short every single day. Like, I knew the code was bad, but not this bad. But somehow fixing it was actually worse. You'd think, if I had just slowed down to create more thoughtful systems, then it would just work, no problem. But in reality, the way it was optimized, it was basically guaranteed to crash your computer with any sort of mega factory. Which is horrible, because that is the whole point of my entire game. So instead of trying to optimize this monstrosity, I completely scrapped it and created an entire new system. But when I tell you it got way too complex, I'm not lying. <sighs> Before I explain the over-engineered solution that I went with, let me show you the problem. Simply put, every laser in the game would get recalculated every single frame. So if you wanted a mega factory with 100,000 lasers, then your computer would absolutely explode. Just look for yourself. In theory, this should be the easiest possible factory for my game to run because it only uses a lot of mirrors just reflecting the lasers around. But as you can see, the FPS is already down to 60 frames per second, which is horrible because nothing is really going on and the world is tiny. So at this point, there is no way we are getting anywhere close to 1,000 or 10,000 lasers to make mega factories. But the reason I coded the system this way is because it is 10,000 times simpler than what I am about to show you. Which leads us to the real problem. At this point, the laser manager just recalculates every laser in the chain because it has no clue if you intersect with this laser that you should only change the ones after it. So naturally, you might think, oh, just recalculate the laser from where you intercepted the chain. Oh, I wish you were right. So yes, that sort of works, but it brings up two big problems. How do lasers know who's in their chain? And what happens if you hit multiple lasers at the same time? The first part is actually pretty simple because when, let's say, a laser spawns and it hits a machine, it just asks the machine, it just asks how many lasers come out. And let's just say for this example, um, two lasers were to come out. Then this laser would save those as its child nodes. So if we number these, this would be one, two, and three. So this now number one would know that what comes after it in the chain is two and three. So if you were to move, let's say a mirror, just one of these little mirrors, and it were to hit this laser here, then it would know that it needs to either update or recalculate just these lasers after. And then these ones would do their children and so on and so forth until the whole chain recalculates only what it needs to. And boom, only the affected sections get recalculated. That's sadly the easy part. But the second question, yeah, that's where things actually break. In your factories, you're not gonna hit one laser at a time. You're gonna slam into multiple lasers at once, which meant the entire chain could recalculate twice or three times or 10 times, depending on how cursed your build was. And in a mega factory, that would absolutely nuke your FPS. So I had to give every laser its own little ID badge so they could figure out who's the highest in the chain. Because if you hit, let's say, laser one and five at the same time because of a weird intersection, then you would only want to update laser one because down the chain, it would recalculate laser five. So that's the theory at least. And once that was stabilized, I only added one other little optimization that every game uses to boost the FPS even more. Pretty much the further you zoom out, the simpler the objects get. Less detail, less GPU death, more mega factories. And boom, everything is stable. Nothing is exploding, which means there's only one thing left to do. Test if my factory can now handle 100,000 
lasers. If I'm being completely honest, I have no clue if this is gonna work because I kinda picked 100,000 just because it was a really clickable number. So let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> so here is what 100 lasers looks like and already they are all in the screen and we are still up at around 120 fps and i can move around and look at all the lasers and if i ever zoom in then it's rendering less, so the FPS now boosts way higher, which is already way better than last time. So this is 300 lasers, and now the FPS is down to 60, and it is not feeling super amazing, which is not a good sign, but is already way better than last time. So give me one quick sec, I'm going to try to add a ton more lasers, but if the SPS gets crazy, then you guys will get to see. Alright, let's do it. Okay guys, so this is now 685 lasers, and that is as high as I think I'm going to go for now because you, as you can see, the FPS is now barely cracking 20. This is not a super crazy factory as well. Like I want you to be able to have global level factories. So there is no way we are even getting close to 100,000 lasers. But that is okay because I have a bunch of other ideas for optimizations that might actually be able to get us way higher than I had ever expected. Because 100,000 is already an enormous number. But I think we could honestly get higher. But for now, you can only have large factories, not mega factories yet. But I swear, I will not stop optimizing my game until your 13 cent Timu laptop can run enormous factories flawlessly. Well, at least I'm gonna try. All jokes aside, if you thought this game was cool or you just wanted to create your own mega factories one day, then subscribing is the best way to follow along on the journey. And if you want to help actually shape the game as I build it, the Discord server is where the suggestions and all the chaos happens. But if you don't really care about all that and you just want to hear when the game comes out, then you should just wishlist the game on Steam and forget about it. Well, okay, I don't want you to, but it's up to you. Okay, I know this is getting long-winded here, but the last thing I want to say is if you haven't already seen how this game started out, then you should check out this, this video somewhere around here because it is epic. Reverse howdy.